Good morning. On behalf of the Cayman Islands government, I offer you a warm Cayman kind welcome to today's breakfast briefing. I hope this session gives you great insights into why the Cayman Islands is a leading jurisdiction for captive insurance business. If you're already acquainted with the Cayman Islands, I trust that this event will remind you of the importance that both the Cayman Islands government and IMAC place on the captive sector in the Cayman Islands. Regrettably, I'm not able to be there and speak with you today in person. However, Cayman is an inviting place and so the doors of our three islands are always open whenever you'd like to come and spend time with us. Within our financial services industry, captive insurance is a key sector that enhances our global reputation and contributes to our local economy. As you know, the Cayman Islands is the world's leading domicile for hedge funds with about 70% registered here. We are also the second largest domicile for captive insurance companies worldwide and the top domicile for healthcare captives with 33% of Cayman's captives covering healthcare risks. These facts point to an enviable position for the Cayman Islands in global finance, especially in the captive insurance space. Regardless of the issues of the day, the Cayman Islands continues to tr attract sound business through its regulatory framework and adherence to international standards in the financial services industry. In addition, Cayman participates in external assessments by global regulatory bodies. Among them is the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, which evaluated Cayman's anti-money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism regime in December 2017 and the upcoming June assessment by the OECD's Forum on Harmful Tax Practices regarding our economic substance regime. In navigating these assessments, Cayman recognizes that we, like all other international financial centers, will be assessed for compliance with financial services regulatory standards. We consider our cooperation with global assessments to be an important pillar of our responsibility as a leading international financial center. Our cooperation was central to Cayman's absence from the EU's March 2019 update of its list of non-cooperative jurisdictions for tax purposes. This was expected as we had lived up to our December 2017 commitments to implement legislation by the end of 2018 that introduced economic substance requirements for relevant Cayman entities. Ultimately, these assessments serve to enhance the reputation of the Cayman Islands, which benefits captives, our wider financial services industry, and the overall jurisdiction. We can see that those benefits play out in Cayman's economy, where we've seen much progress with the development of our infrastructure. Our redeveloped Owen Roberts International Airport, for example, recently underwent extensive renovations, such as a terminal expansion. It was just a little over a month ago, on the 28th of March, that His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, officially reopened the airport to much fanfare. The redevelopment of our airport helps to solidify our position as a preeminent destination in the Caribbean. The expansion work was almost tripled our airport previous capacity, thus supporting an increase in visitor air arrivals and facilitating even smoother immigration and customs processes. In addition to the airport renovation, we are also proud of the significant progress made on our other major capital projects. We remain committed to constructing two cruise piers and enhanced cargo facilities in the Cayman Islands. Government is also developing additional road networks to increase connectivity and ease traffic flows. You may also be interested to know that our room stock is being boosted through incoming hotel chains such as the Hyatt and the Hilton and even through Airbnb. All of these developments benefit from the strength of the financial services industry, which has historically contributed nearly half of the Cayman Islands gross domestic product. For example, according to government's 2017 National Accounts Report, which was issued in January 2019, the industry generated just more than $1.3 billion, 
or 33% of Cayman's $3.9 billion in GDP at base prices. It should be noted that this number excludes contributions from the accounting and legal professions as they are grouped together with other services outside of the financial services industry. Therefore, the real impact of the financial services industry on our GDP is not 33%, but roughly 44% taking those professions into consideration. Such a robust financial services industry, which includes the strength of our work in the captive sector, allows the Cayman Islands to attract clients of all sizes, we know the management of your portfolio requires technical and highly skilled professionals. And, as you'll hear from IMAC, Cayman has an abundance of expertise to apply and to aptly meet your needs. On behalf of the Cayman Islands government, I thank you for being at today's session. If you're already conducting your business with and in the Cayman Islands, I thank you for your support. If not, I encourage you to speak to the captive professionals on hand today to find out why Cayman is best suited for your business. Thank you.